so we shall move on to model itself. So we we have been looking at um, mainly Revit import, but we do like to stress that this is it's just a GBXML that you whether it be whatever package that you're using, as long as it exports a GBXML, you'll be okay. You can use that. So we're looking here at actually maybe you're wanting your to you find it easier to make changes or updates within Modelit. So the key questions that we always ask, and again, it's, it's kind of looking at the design before you actually go and build any geometry. Um, we always ask, what are you simulating? Are there any similar parts of the model that you can replicate easily by just making one unit of it or something? Um, maybe it was uh, student apartments. You, you can make one, stick the glazing on it, put all the names on, and then just copy that geometry around. The same with glazing. Um, there's a lot of quick tricks that you can do with the glazing to speed up the applying that to your geometry. So, um, I mentioned there are other common room names and IDs that you can uh, add into multiple spaces at the one time. Um, whether you're using the new tab edit function or the the rename tool within Model it, um, and uh, yeah, any similar glazing types. So these are all questions you need to look at. So let's say you've had uh, the GBXML, you've brought it in from your other package, um, and then you there's maybe an update update to the design. So what we'll, we'll I'll do a demonstration of is maybe some ways that you could quickly address the, those scenarios. The other thing to, that we always look at as well, is, um, we do um, quite regularly have models given to us um, from clients using SketchUp. And where, again, it's an issue, are these uh, models being built for export for, to the virtual environment for energy analysis in mind, or have they built been built solely as an architectural model. So the scenario where you may have, you can see the image here on the left hand side, there's a quite detailed briefly. Um, and in this project, uh, the, you can see that the, all the fins were put in individually. So in that case, the, the actual impact of having that full design, uh, when you come to actually look at um, the, the shading devices on the energy model, there's no need for that amount of detail. Um, so it, we, took, instead, we could have just exported it as it was. It would have taken longer to run the simulations. But you can also, in a, even within SketchUp, it's fairly handy just to recreate these as planes instead of actual volumes with multiple surfaces. The key issue with this uh, shading device would be the number of surfaces that are uh, within that uh, shading device. So we reduced it just down to one plane, which dramatically speed, speeds up the simulation time. And so that's some things that you can think about when you're uh, exporting uh, from other packages. You can also look at, as I say, if maybe you've got double skin facades or uh, and how to model these. I can show you some uh, the ways that we would model these um, in a few seconds. We can also look to, I'll use the example of pitch truths, um, and again, we'll use, use the example I'll show you is if you're just building this within a uh, model itself, how you can quickly cut pitch roofs into multiple zones rather than doing it one, one at a time to save you, save you time. And importing here, you can see the, the model and the, the background image there. Uh, if you get any complex geometry uh, like that, I would that model. I would, I would not approach to build in the virtual environment. I could build it there, but it is not the most effective way to complete the project in the time span that we were given. So I use SketchUp to to create that geometry. So it's always a usually it's a question of what tool have you got at your at your fingertips and which is the best tool to do the job. And from my point of view, I use all that I can get my hands on to get any job done as quick as possible. So uh, we'll get we'll have some demonstrations of that, and we'll go through a few ways of actual glazing tips themselves. So if I just open up, we've got I've got um, base models here. So we'll, we'll look at the um, 
the pitch strip example first. So here I've just got a set of um, actual um, rooms. You can see they're all in different places. So if you let's the scenario is that we've got a pitch roof here. So to create that geometry, I would just say, right, okay, what's the highest point of the pitch of the roof? So I would just pull all the room volumes up to that height, and you can do that by just using the. Um, if I go into an elevation. So you can use just select them all and use the edit element of heights here. So I've just said that the maximum height of the pitched roof is at 10 meters. So the, what it would do is um, just select one of them, click on the connect spaces option. Now here you can select one and shift select in the project browser and click connect. So these are now acting as one space. So I can now cut the pitched roof into all these rooms in one move. So down to the levels, select, oh, select edit, I said edit. So in here we're using the divide space tool and I'm just going to click on this button at the top here which just allows me to drag the cutting plane that I have here into the, the plane, into a plane. So if I can change, change my views you can see the cutting plane there, the points of that in the top. So I'm going to say that this coordinate here, we can reduce the pitch, it drops down to 5 meters. If I go back to my axonometric view, generate cutting plane and divide space. So at this point we have cut the, the uh, spaces, but they're still all joined up together, so I'm just going to click on the separate composite space. Now you could just select them all and separate and then delete these all extra bits individually. If I go to my front view, I can just make sure. So that's the space that we want to separate, and it's always the second in line. So if I just hold in control, select all these and separate them, what I should get, if I go back up to the top and select this top part and just delete it. So there we have our, um, our room volumes with a a pitch. So you don't need to do it room by room. People aren't always aware that you can uh, have the ability to do that. So it's quite handy uh, to, to be aware of. So that's the pitch roofs uh, demonstration. Now what I can do um, to move on, I mentioned that I'd try and give uh, some SketchUp demonstrations as well. What you can do if I just uh, say five meters, let's say that you had some other kind of roof design that was something that you you wanted to maybe maybe it was a curved roof that you thought would be easier to build in another package. So what I would do at this point is um, you've got the option of do if I just do save that. If I do model it, export DXF file. And if I just say, when you export a DXF, you've got a few options of polyline, polyline with openings, polyface mesh, and polyface mesh with openings. So if you had any uh, window elements or any opening types, you could take them out. I'll just choose polyface mesh, and I'll call it roof. Take that. So I'm just going to open up SketchUp. So while that's opening up, take a few seconds. There we go. So we've got our man there that I'll just delete. So what you can do is now import the uh, the DXF into just change the file type down the bottom here. So I've got my roof DXF, which is basically the model. Change your units, make sure that's set the same because it's the, the VE it's set in meters, and just open that. If 
I fit to view. So we've got our base model. So what I do is sometimes it comes in grouped, sometimes it doesn't. So I just make sure that I group that. We've got that geometry still in the VE, so we don't need that. So I would just then create my, my roof in place. So I'll just create a quick barrel. So I've created my surface and I'll just drag that across. So we've got our, our roof and we can just select the, the rest of the geometry we don't want. So I'll just save this model. And put that in here. So now at this point, you can group this if you want using the plugin options, but I'll just run it as it is. So click on Identify Rooms and save that. So the software is now just saying what is a room volume and what is a actual, um, just a surface or an external object. So it's found that space. You could start setting up some construction information, building type, etc. Um, not a problem to do it at this point, and some uh, or HVAC services. But with this scenario, we're just exporting the geometry. So just launch that to the virtual environment. So here we have our roof. So how do we get that into our main model? It's fairly easy. You just say, go to your model at menu and export gem file. Gem file just stands for geometry only, really, and that it won't export any template information, any data. It is pure geometry, uh, walls and openings and rooms. So export gem file and save that there. And if we go back to our main model, and if we do model it, import gem file. And it brings it in. So we've created a um, model within. So that's you moving back and forward between the virtual environment and SketchUp. So it's more tools that you've got available to you just to, uh, to create geometry. It doesn't always have to be uh, one and that way. So that's one thing that you can do which does cover some of my other points is how you use gem files as well. Um, you, gem files you can not only use, we use them, um, let's say for example you've got a really large model. Um, you can coordinate if you want multiple people to work on that model and have um, uh, one person maybe building from the top down to the bottom. Um, I've got an example project that I can show you, uh, which I'll cover. So, so what I'll do at this point is actually look, go look at uh, glazing uh, options that you can uh, look at. So, so here's a project. Let's see that um, the opening types here. So we've got our geometry. Let's say that we've put in these um, spandrel panels here in this project as uh, door elements to allow us to assign a different construction. So let's say the designs change maybe in your BIM model and you, instead of actually exporting your GBXML, you want to update the, your virtual environment model without having to go back and adjust uh, and ex do, go through the export process. So what you can do, there's a quite a, a nice wee what we call a key in that you can use uh, in our key in field at the top here. I'm sure we can make it available. The, if, if you don't have these, we can make these key ins available. Um, so I'm just going to select the whole building just to make sure I get them all. So I would just say, OK, I want all my doors to become actual glazed elements. So I just type in open equals W. And it will just change all my openings in a certain type. Now you don't, obviously I didn't need to do that as a blanket change. You could just make the update and on a room by room basis. So it's maybe only certain rooms. But you can see it's, you can fairly quickly change uh, opening types to, to suit what you want just by selecting the required ones that you want to change. Now another thing what I'll actually do is, is just uh, remove all the glazing from this model. 
yeah, I'll just remove it all. So in the edit glazing tool, you can just go to the remove option, uh, and this set for the whole building rotation, and it's all vertical surfaces. So I'll just apply that, and we've got our blank model. You can see a blank canvas. So in this case, we'll say right. Actually, the the glazing design has changed uh, on the whole building. So there's a couple of ways that you you can approach this. You can approach it facade by facade, or maybe it's actually the same glazing um, on the building all the way uh, uh, all the way up. So you would, or in that scenario, you only need to do it once, and then you can copy it up. So to do that, I would first well look at the. Say you want to copy a, you've got an elevation drawing. Um, so what you can do uh, is just copy that elevation drawing exactly. So I don't want to lose that space. So if I go down one level, and when we're at surface level, just select the required surface, which is that one. And you can see you can, uh, that's the wrong height. Now, if you get an intersection warning coming up a lot, now the reason I'm getting it is we've got a canopy here which I've actually turned off. So what I'll do is actually turn the intersections off, and which you can do by clicking Escape in the key in field and and equals off. Uh, so I'll just change that, and I need to change this temporary zone up to I thought that said 50 meters. So we'll go down a level this time. That's better. So here we can see if I actually just detach that. So here we can see the front facade of our building here. So it allows us we don't need to go down to the surface level of each individual uh, room or space. I'm just going to edit the uh, grid down. So and I'm going to attach a DXF to this surface level. So. So here you can see the, the DXF, it's because there's a, a slight jink in the design in the corner detail, so I just have to move this DXF along to to be in the right position. So then we can start applying the, the, the glazing on this elevation. So you can see the design's repeated, so I could just do it once. I'll just draw it in as uh, actual big blocks, but you can put in the million design if you want. Let me just another key thing we'll always advise to use your grid lock. It makes editing a lot easier for yourself. So and I'll just do one for the whole size there. So you could just build that one. Once you've built it, you can just select it and just copy the multiples across. And do keep doing the same. So it's fairly quick and easy to with this process to update the, the glazing. As you can see. I'll just delete these ones because I think they're a bit different. And the last set will do. So if we go back up and delete that, we can have a look at our glazing in place. So what you can also do Let's see whether it be um, vertically, you can copy this glazing up just using a similar technique. So you can, uh, let me just get the floor heights here. So that's 8.7 or 1.7. So you get. This method you could use for all facades. You can just draw in a what I'd call a temporary zone for all facades. 
but I'll just do it for this front. So you could continue going all the way around the building here if you've got glazing placed on one floor, and then just copy all the gla all the glazing for every elevation up in one move. So I'll just close that off. So you can check and see if it's taken on. So you can see the glazing's transferred. So if I just go into a front elevation and just copy that block up and place the glazing up there. So you could repeat that process. And as I say, you don't need to do one elevation at a time with this. Um, and then you can just go back to your plan view. Oh. Uh, to view. Delete these. And we can have a look at that glazing in the viewer. So we've copied that strip of glazing up. And it saves you doing that individually. So planning out if you've got repetitive glazing, you can quickly get that uh, uh, achieved. The other process, again, um, some people don't want to add in the mullions, as I've done there. Or maybe it's just big strips of glass, then you can um, input to for certain levels. So let me just remove that. So edit glazing tool and remove. So I can just untick the, the voids. And again, this is a good view to see the, the grouping schemes used. So I can say apply glazing by percentage and add in 100% to all these. So once you, maybe it's not actually full 100% of the um, the facade in this case. So what you can do is then refine that glazing detail down. So we can go to edit element heights. And then here, instead of using the floor to ceiling option, you can edit the windows elements themselves. So maybe there's actually a um, a small sill height on the ground floor, and the same on the first floor. And so on. So maybe it wasn't full height glazing. So you could edit that. Oh, there's it on. So you've added in glazing and you've um, made a slight change to the detail of the glass. So if you want full stripped glass like that. So there's a few tools that you can use, uh, and a few options that you can tweak to to do, get the geometry to do what you want, saving you time. So if we just go back to this, so we've covered these points. Now I mentioned about a gem file. You can see this project here that we carried out. We had two of us working on it. And because of the size of it, um, and it was something like 6,000 zones that were involved in this project, so we actually made each floor as an individual gem file. Uh, sorry, an individual model, and um, at the, the the end we imported these gem files into one master file, and then started the setup from there. Now doing that allowed us uh, it was quicker to build each floor. Um, now the, the software does run fairly quickly up to a certain point when you get really large models. It it will it will start to maybe slow down when you add in opening types, but you can get around that by using. It's only effects here in really large projects, but there are ways to speed up things. Um, this slide is just as I say, using the, uh, the correct room groups and grouping your model by floors and putting your obstructions and shadings into uh, a room group as well can help tidy up your model, just like in the example I showed you there. Um, and again, after once you've built your geometry, you can use the thermal activity to group your model, which makes the whole process a lot quicker. You can also use components or um, other surrounding blocks as shading devices um, to see the impact of your model um, and actually have components in your model as well, which can be done within the virtual environment. So you, you don't need to have things that are just always, uh, as I say, uh, out things that you wouldn't expect to have in the, the uh, within the virtual environment, you can include all these things.
and you can also produce fly through EVIs or you can take uh, your model in and add components and go into radiance and start creating images within there to um, and looking at your daylighting and your um, your calculations for uh, actual comfort for each rooms and glare analysis so you can use a component library for doing that as well so with model it just like um, um, uh, exporting from bim packages we've come up with the uh, some guidelines that can help you uh, whether you're building in Revit or in uh, Archicad or SketchUp, whatever it is, virtual environment, direct, you, we always say to review your design of your building before you start about creating your geometry. Um, and this is more particular for virtual environment. Clean up your CAD drawings um, to make them uh, easier to manipulate. Uh, utilizing CAD files within the, the VE to back up your models or to save milestones and use the grid locks as far as possible um, and run always run checks on your geometry. Uh, 